The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from curing a few sick people by laying hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. As I mentioned, my name is Father Zach Glick. I'm the new associate pastor uh, here at Queen of All Saints and St. Mary the Immaculate Conception. I was just ordained a little bit over a month ago on June 1st, and just like to give you a little bit of background about myself. I grew up in Highland, Indiana, not too far away. I went to Our Lady of Grace Parish, both for church and for elementary school. And I went to Highland High School and Rose Holman Institute of Technology for college where I studied mechanical engineering. And during college, I was able to participate in Air Force ROTC for my four years there. And then I commissioned into the Air Force as a second lieutenant upon graduation. So you can read a little bit more about my story and how I discerned to become a priest in the insert that's in the bulletin this weekend. But just one other thing is that when I graduated from college, I applied to become a chaplain and candidate in the Air Force. And so now, in addition to being the associate pastor here in Michigan City, I'll also do about one month of service in the Air Force Reserve as a chaplain each year. And so I'm very excited to be here with you in, in Michigan City for these next uh, three years. And I look forward to getting to meet all of you and to serve you in these years to come. I have to admit it is a little bit intimidating preaching on this weekend because both the prophet Ezekiel in the first reading and Jesus in the gospel were rejected by those they were sent to. And so I hope that's not the case here for me. In the first reading, we hear God say to the prophet Ezekiel, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me, hard of face and obstinate of heart. But you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. So we see that Ezekiel is sent to a rebellious people, a people that both he and God knew were probably going to reject him. But God still sent him, which is pretty interesting. And so for us, I think that's has something to say that all of us are called to go and share the gospel with others. But our criterion for success is not whether everyone accepts the word of God or not, but it is rather that everyone hears the word of God. And then in the gospel reading, we see Jesus go into his hometown of Nazareth, and it says that they took offense at him Jesus said in response, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. Jesus was rejected by his hometown, 
by those who are closest to him, those that one would hope would be the first to buy into his message and to support him. This reminds me of the beginning of the Gospel of John in chapter 1, where it says, Jesus, the true light, was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. So these readings today remind us that each one of us is called by God to be his prophet. And this happens through the sacrament of baptism. Each of us who have been baptized is called by God, is commissioned by God to go out into the world and to proclaim the gospel with those in our life. And some will accept this invitation to follow Jesus with joy. But we know that in reality, many people will not accept it. Some people might say nowadays that that's your truth, but I have my own. Or what you believe is hateful and intolerant. Now we know, of course, that those things aren't true. They're based on false principles. So even though people might make up these kinds of excuses to not follow Jesus, God has still called us to go and proclaim the gospel to the world. We're called to share the gospel with others despite what difficulties might arise. There's a beautiful quote that St. Mother Teresa once said, God does not require that we be successful, only that we be faithful. Our true success lies in being faithful to what God has called us to do. And so while fear of rejection might be one of the obstacles for us in proclaiming the gospel to those in our life, I think something that we can all relate to even maybe a little bit more is what Paul talks about in the second reading of having a certain weakness that we think prevents us from proclaiming the gospel. He says, A thorn in the flesh was given to me, Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. So Paul had some sort of weakness. We don't know exactly what it was, whether it was something physical health problem, something mental, emotional, spiritual. But whatever it is, it was somewhat debilitating for, for Paul. And he desperately wanted God to take it away. And yet God allowed this weakness of Paul to remain. There's a story from the 15th century that takes place in Japan. There is a Japanese shogun or a military leader, and he had this tea bowl that he had gotten from China, and it was his favorite tea bowl. He had so beautiful. And one day it, it fell and it got cracked, and he needed it to be repaired. So he sent it to China to see if they could repair it to its original state. But he wasn't satisfied with how it turned out. They had just basically taken a metal staple and connected the two halves of the broken uh, tea bowl together, and it was very unsightly. And so he gave a challenge to the local artisans of Japan around where he was to see if they could make the tea bowl look new or look better than before. And to everyone's surprise, what they did, what they came up with, made the tea bowl even more beautiful somehow than its original. They used a resin that was dusted with gold powder to put the broken pieces of the tea bowl back together. And this became known as the Japanese art form of kintsuki, which is where they repair broken pieces of pottery using a lacquer that they either mix in with golden, gold, silver, or platinum powder, or they dust over with that powder. And there's, you can look up pictures on the internet. It's a very beautiful type of pottery that has these golden seams to the broken pottery. And I think this is somewhat what Paul is talking about in the second reading, that he says, power made perfect in weakness. 
So what does this show for us? I think that the beauty of our lives is often in the broken, in our weaknesses. And not just ordinary broken, but the brokenness of our lives that we hand over to God, that we surrender to him. And that's the key. That I might have cracks or weaknesses or wounds, but I don't have to hide them, especially in order to proclaim the gospel. We can ask for God to to take those things away and to make us brand new. But what's most important for each of us is that we can say to God, Lord, I surrender this to you. And now when people see the cracks and my weaknesses and my brokenness surrendered to God, they're able to see God in that. It shows that God can make saints out of people that have a weakness, of people that have been broken. God doesn't have to take away the crack in order to make us whole. Sometimes the presence of wounds actually highlights God's presence more than the absence of them would. For myself, going through seminary the past six years, there's many things that from time to time I thought, I couldn't be a priest because of this. I mentioned that I studied engineering in college, and so math and science are very much my thing. But public speaking was not on my you know, top 100 things, of things I'd like to do. And yet, as a priest, you have to do public speaking every day, oftentimes more than once a day. And so I could have said to the Lord, no, Lord, I'm too weak for this. I can't do this. But I realized that God's power working through me can make all things possible. It is through our weakness that his power shines. And so what is it that we think might be the obstacle or the weakness that's preventing us from sharing the gospel with those in our lives? Are we afraid of possibly being rejected by the people we speak to? Or do we have a weakness or a brokenness that we think would prevent us? Whatever it is, Jesus is telling us in today's readings that he can work through us and that he wants to work through us to bring salvation to the world because his power is made perfect in our weakness. So as we come to the altar of the Lord this morning, Let us call to mind our baptism and the commissioning to proclaim the gospel that we received in it. Confident that when we surrender our weaknesses to the Lord, his power can shine through us as we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the world.